Hello and welcome to episode 5 of the Parable Cast, your weekly dose of gaming news, gossip and a load of gaming, gaming games, you know, video games. So um, today I'm Dan and I'm introducing the Parable Cast and I have with me Matt. Hello, how's it going? And filling in for Sonny, who was unfortunately unable to make it, we have Michael. Hey guys. Michael's very nervous. I'm not nervous. <laughs> But, um, it wouldn't be the Parable cast. Yeah, it wouldn't be the Parable cast if Nofi wasn't about to shit himself. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I, I, have no, I have nothing to say to that. <laughs> yeah, nothing to say to anything, mate. <laughs> not yet, anyway. But, um, not yet, anyway. But um, today you should be seeing some absolutely delicious Just Cause 2 by Matt, PC Supremacy at its best, in the background. And um, we're obviously going to kick things off with the way we should have been kicking things off every single week, but haven't been, and only did it last week, which is what have you been playing this week. So, Michael, what have you been playing this week? Well, this week, Dan, I have been playing Super Mario 3D Land. This week, Dan, I'm going to be... <laughs> <laughs> Winston Churchill's with us today. <laughs> uh, uh, so, what was that you've been playing again? Sorry, I, I just got... <laughs> I caught, I got caught up. I'm sorry. Super Mario 3D Land. It's something I've been meaning to get for a long time, but just never got around to it. And my god, is it amazing. See, I bought a 3DS. And I, I didn't buy any games. Any well, games? I bought, what did I buy? I bought some... No, I, I, not really. I didn't buy anything decent. I just didn't think there was. I regret buying it, to be honest. There's nothing good on it. Until Animal Crossing, anyway. Until Animal Crossing, yeah. Um, you had like, the biggest case of buyer's remorse at that um, console. Yeah, I did at first, but now, you know, it's just sort of, I've gotten over the uh, dent left in my wallet, <laughs> and now it's just a very pretty paperweight. But... But, so, Michael, how is Super Mario? Oh, it, it's you jump? brilliant. <laughs> oh, yeah, you jump, you do a lot of that, yeah. It's, a lot it's, of jumping. Oh. It's nice to see they're innovating. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna do, It's nothing new, really. Well, it's something new. It's like, like it's a casual Mario game. If, you know, you can get... So more. it's nothing new. Yeah, it's nothing new. <laughs> It's would, you, still, would you say it's a particular yes. improvement over previous Mario titles, like, or is it just another Mario title? It's bare bones Mario, but it's just more of the good stuff. That's all I can really say about it, and I like the good stuff. That's fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I would pick it up if I saw it for cheap enough. So I am a bit of a sucker for the fundamental Mario, but the uh... jump, jump, yeah, jump with it. Jump. There is <laughs> nothing better than a solid, well, well tuned platforming experience. There is nothing better. It's true. There's something nice about you know. Speed running a level. Oh, I actually yeah. played the um, I played New Super Mario Brothers on the uh, was it the DS or three D? It was the DS, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. That was so that's the only game. handheld Mario title I've played in a long, long, long time since the New Super Mario Brothers sixty four times four or something like that. Oh uh, no, just so, Mario sixty four DS. <laughs> I'm sure it was sixty four times four. Oh no, that was just a code name that they used for the E three demo in two thousand four. Oh, was it? <laughs> but yeah, the, those two are the only handheld Mario titles I've played since the DS came out. And um, they were I like the new... only ones. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> sure. Yeah, pretty much. I'm sure there were loads of Mario titles. Oh yeah, but most of them were just. There was like number two. There was uh, that coin. There thing was number two point five Mario something. Tennis. Mario goes to the beach. <laughs> Mario <laughs> does his shopping. Paper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then there was obviously the the eagerly awaited Princess Peach goes to the beach, but that never got released. Because... There, actually, there actually was a super <laughs> not released in Britain. <laughs> Not released anywhere. Super Princess Peach Japan. is honestly my favourite handheld Mario game. Really? Which one? Super Princess Rip Peach? Rip to me, I don't give a shit. I've yeah. never played it. I really wanted to. It, Why would you oh, have played it? It looks great. It works. It, it's really good. It's it's actually, you know, sort of, it's got everything we love about Mario, and then a bit of an expansion. And a girl. Because <laughs> your strongest weapon is her emotions. <laughs> bit like anything. So I just find brilliant. It's just, it's so fundamentally perfect. It's just got some weird mechanics. It's like, cry to win or something. Have you played it, Michael? I haven't, but I'm going to criticise it anyway. <laughs> it, it is quite, quite what it's the fundamental me- uh, message the game delivers is cry and scream, and you get what you want. It's, it's well, obviously a really it's, good message to deliver because it's pretty much true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a statement. So on moving life. on with the uh, misogynist cast. <laughs> <laughs> this week on the misogynist cast, we cover new Super <laughs> Princess Peach. <laughs> we got a special author from the Daily Mail with us today. <laughs> So moving on from us being misogynist bastards, um, have you been playing anything else this week, or have you just been Mario every day, all day? 
I've pretty much just been sitting on Mario all day, every day. <laughs> well, nice to see that Michael likes a bit of variety in his life. <laughs> <laughs> so, Matt, what have you been playing this week? Well, as the background footage might suggest, uh, I've been playing Just Cause 2. As I always, as, as I ever play, it's... I'm not even going to need to talk about it, really, because it's such a fundamentally good game. With an exception of that, though, because there's not really that much we can talk about there, because everybody knows how glorious Just Cause 2 is. I don't. Uh, oh, you guys... <laughs> uh, it, it's everything anybody could want, and it's, it's like, it takes what GTA does so well and just makes it so much better by... Because, you know, GTA seems to have all these limitations in it. At least like it you has don't multiplayer. But GTA attempts to take itself seriously. Yeah. At least and Just Cause 2 gives you a 50 metre grapple hook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it instantly becomes better than any other game ever made. Because that 50 metre grapple hook, you can do anything with. And infinite parachutes. Exactly. And, you know, it's fairly easily moddable. 50 metres isn't enough. Who cares? Download a mod. <laughs> Three kilometres. <laughs> See, I could have fun with that, but I'm pretty sure my PC isn't good enough to run just yeah, console. Then. It's so well optimized, mind on the computer. It's phenomenally well optimized. Yeah. Just as, as in, I, I have more trouble running Minecraft than Just Cause 2. What? Because Minecraft's awfully just yeah, optimized. Terrible. Uh, I'll give you that, but still, it's. Uh, I don't know. I would get it if I could justify like. I want you to can figure justify out. It, trust me. Justify the three quid that it was when it's on sale. Yeah, but it, it's on sale all the time. Just waiting for this next. It up. depends how well it runs on my PC because I've bought a few games that I've kind of just like played and thought to myself, "Oh wait, no, I can't run this very well." That's. Let's be honest. Yeah. You could probably run it on a bin bag. Yeah, <laughs> and it still looks beautiful. I'm not sure how they got, did it, but uh, I'm assuming black magic. <laughs> yeah. They, um, Multiplayer is looking good as well. Uh, I haven't actually managed to get onto the uh, beta testing for that, but is the beta always open now, or is it just like weekends here and there? Uh, yeah, occasional weekends they just open up for everybody. Yeah, apparently it works really well. Can't see parachutes at the moment though, which is a um, has humorous results. <laughs> if anything, it makes the game better. <laughs> <laughs> it, it looks great though. Yeah, it really does. It's going to be so much fun when it gets released. Have you been playing anything else? Or? Um, bits and pieces. Nothing particularly long, you know, I've been enjoying a little bit of a visual novel for a fair while of my time. A, f- a few hundred hours of your time. Yeah, a few bazillion <laughs> hours, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> and um, a few indie games here and there, none of which I felt were particularly... I know brilliant. that you've been playing um, Tales from Space Super Mutant Blobs Attack, or just Mutant yeah. Blobs Attack? Yeah, yeah, that one, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and you've the one played with the blobs. as well, Michael, haven't you? I have, and it's 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 actually really, really fun. Mm. Yeah, it's. I preferred it. Yeah, it, out of what I've played fairly recently, indie wise, it's definitely one of the titles I'm more excited for. It looks really good as well. It looks so clean. Yeah, it's I suppose so that that clean. comes from it being a PlayStation Vita port. Hmm. Yeah, I, I was really surprised to find out that it was a uh, Vita port actually. So it, it, there's so much to it. I. As, as soon as I started, I'm trying to say, yeah. I mean, as soon as I started like clicking on stuff, and then I found out it was a Vita port. It's like keyboard and clicking and a kind of side scroll. I just thought to myself, yeah, this this is a port from a Vita game. This is just characteristically. Yeah, it, do, it does look very. There are there are parts of it that look like they're made specifically just to utilize like the Vita touchscreen and back panel and things like that. I mean, obviously, yeah. because it was one of the many titles that are being released, used to kind of showcase what the Vita can do with its touchscreens and it's everything it's got ever. Um, I don't know. It, uh, I would. I didn't think it would translate very well to PC, but it sounds like it has translated quite well to PC. The controls are awkward, uh, to say the least. But really? I didn't yeah, find them that it's... awkward. I found them quite. Easy. Did you get to you know, the point where you had to sort of control and move the platform? Oh yeah, I found that really easy to do. I found it so simple. All right. Maybe match the bad at video games. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed it. It's. I'm not a huge fan of indie games, and it's an indie game that I'm going to go back to at some point, which is uh, quite the compliment coming from me. Yeah, because you don't like video games. No, I hate video games. <laughs> we all hate video games, sir. But, um, I've been playing... Uh, I've actually been playing two titles this week, Shark Horror. Um, one of them is the very standard Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3, because I've got poor taste. I've, um, yep. I'll agree with that. Obviously, I, I play the game competitively, so uh, my team 
has been kind of split up and I've been looking for a new team so I've been playing a lot to keep practice and play with different people and you know try and form some kind of a team so I've been playing quite a lot of Modern Warfare 3 over the last week and on top of that I played a game called I can never pronounce this it's either Lega Sister or Liga Sister but I like to call it Legal Sister <laughs> oh, and it's a um, it's a PSN title it's a uh, it's a very 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 Japanese title which I really like um and it's basically an action dungeon crawl RPG mishmash mabob, and it's fucking glorious. Mishmash mabob. Mishmash mabob. It's it's bloody brilliant. Um, I feel that if you don't already play the kind of titles that NIS America make, then you won't enjoy it. But if if you like things like this guy or shit like that, it's it's one of those games that if you don't buy, you're possibly mentally deranged. It's they quite like the. Um, it's got a character creator in it, hasn't it? Yes, character creator. Yeah, from what I uh, from what I saw of it, it looks really quite good. It looks uh, ideal, almost. Yeah, you can make all the little girls. I've got a legion of them. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember when you started playing it. You were talking to me at the same time. I just remember you screaming <laughs> and then just... happiness. Yeah, it's just you screamed, and I think you just shouted, "This is the best game I've ever played." It's just. <laughs> I, I don't know how that mixes and it works. It doesn't. You scream at a game, you love it. Game. I mean, th- it looks lovely. It's got like a lot of charm to it. It's um, graphically like not that amazing, but obviously games like Disguise are, but they have their like the, the style that they're made in make it makes it look really nice. And it's in a very similar style to Disguise, but um, the characters are fucking great. They're like, they're really lovable characters. The only issue coming in that you can't have. English audio, you can only have Japanese audio. Although, not an issue. Yeah, obviously for me it's not an issue. Uh, I think it's a good thing, if anything, because a lot of um, dubbed video games have terrible voices, especially NIS America ones. Just RPGs in general, really. Pretty much. But yeah, the ga- the gameplay itself is at, it's great. There's nothing that really... I, I haven't seen anything that directly relates to that game, gameplay-wise. Like, There's nothing that can directly contest it. It's bloody brilliant. It really does sound quite, again, it's you know, one of those titles that I'm ever so jealous that you get to play and I don't. <laughs> uh, I don't actually think it's out over here at all. I think it, I think it's only released in America at the moment. Uh, it's, a, it's a downloadable title for the PS3, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That was said, like, five minutes ago. Yeah, it's, it's a great game, though. Oh, I, I totally <laughs> recommend it to anybody who likes Weibo shit, to be honest. That's so, such um, a name of robbing it in. It's okay, it's okay. But, um... Obviously, moving on, we've been playing a lot of very bad video games this week. I've been playing Weibo games and Call of Duty, a great combination. Matt has been playing casual <laughs> stuff, and Michael's what been are jumping you all on about? Um, turtles. Yeah, you've been jumping on turtles. That's what you've been doing. And strange. So, sorry, wait, wait. Just Cause Two is casual, but Mario isn't. Mario's the Mario's <laughs> as hardcore as you can get. Don't don't even try that, Matt. Don't even try it. <laughs> well, anyway. But yeah, moving on, we are now going to move on to the section that we've never actually forgot, Shot Horror, which is the news. We're going to talk about any of the major stories this week that actually matter to us personally, rather than talking about all of the stuff that happened this week. And I'm going to start with one that will make a lot of people very happy, which is The Last Guardian. <gasps> the fact that um, we've actually been given an update on it by Team Ico, and that is the fact that they're still working on it, because it was kind of in limbo <laughs> for ages, and everybody thought it was dead and gone and forgotten. And they were like, you know, we had the game playable. Actually, this is a quote. We had the game playable. At one point, we felt it would be produced for a certain time period. That was the time we prematurely talked about the launch window. But it turned out that technological technical issues are much harder to solve. So the engineering team had to go back and redo some of the work they've done. And it's going to be released on PS3. Yeah. But it's not even a year, though. It's just on PS3. That's so reassuring. <laughs> To be fair, it is very reassuring because it looked like it, it was expected to be pushed back to the next generation or to die, and luckily it's doing neither of those things. So far, this podcast has done nothing but make me regret buying a 3DS and regret not buying a play at PS3. <laughs> do, you, do you like the look of The Last Guardian, then? Uh, yeah, I like the look of... this. Uh, I, I could list the games I enjoy in 360 on five fingers. What? Then... Uh, PS, there are so many great 360 uh, games, and not to go on a tangent, we won't talk about this in depth, but there are so many great 360 games. I, th- I think it's just that you don't look hard enough, to be honest. 
just, it just hates good video games, that's it. Yeah. I mean, both the PS3 and... The PS3 probably has more... Um, better, it has well, better exclusives. Yeah, it has... I sp- yeah, I suppose that's what I'm... Yeah. When, when I say good Xbox games, I'm generally referring to games I can't get on my PC, because obviously that's my uh, preferred platform. Mm. But, I mean, the fact that The Last Guard is coming out on PS3 is absolutely great news. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely ecstatic about it. I mean, yeah. Shadow of the Colossus, such a great game. The Last Guardian bought... was like one of the flagship titles for PS3, to be honest, since its announcement. I can actually remember when it got announced. I remember yeah, the original trailer for it had a different face on the Guardian that just looked absolutely awful. <laughs> but yeah, oh. I'm looking forward to it so much. Shadow of the Colossus is probably my favourite PS2 game, maybe. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I don't even know what it's going to play like. I'm just thinking to myself, oh, the same people made it. Let's let's have a go. It's going to be great. Yeah, I mean, it should be good because Team Ico have never done a bad title. To be honest. They've never made a poor title. Mm. So I suppose as long as as long as they take the time they need to develop the game they want to develop, we should get something really bloody good. Well, they're certainly taking the time to do that, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, what? About 20 years and counting? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, they said themselves it's going to be... It's only technical issues, so there's nothing wrong with the actual like game itself. It's just... Technical oh, no, glitches that they're encountering. Obviously, if they re- if they released it now, it would probably end up quite poor because of those technical issues. So oh, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of glad that it won't be released for a good probably end of next year, maybe. I mean, be something to look forward to at least. Yeah. Maybe um, I'll pick up a PS3 by then and get to have some fun. Yeah, the next thing that would make you very slightly yeah. even more jealous. I'm off. I'm yeah, going one home. more. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope you don't start cutting yourself, and that is the fact that Tokyo Jungle got a new trailer and it was actually dated. <laughs> and it's to release on 25th of September in North America and 26th, 26th, yeah, 26th of September on Europe. And it's a tenor. Should, and it looks so damn good. Should we just explain what it is to everyone who has yeah, no Mike, idea? You, you can explain what Tokyo Jungle is. You can try to explain what yeah. Tokyo Jungle is. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's not something easy to explain. But basically, the premise is Tokyo has turned into this wasteland and it's full of animals. You get to be an animal, and you get to just survive in Tokyo as this animal. It's the most. You can essentially be any animal. Yeah, you can be any gather. animal that's in the game. Like I believe, I, I actually read um, kind of some guy who play tested it absolutely ages ago, and he played as a cat, and then he watched someone else play as a hyena, and it had shown gameplay where you could play as a mouse and a dog as well. You can. Uh, there's like dinosaurs and shit in it as well. Yeah, all kinds of shit. It's great. Chickens. <laughs> There's a bit of a bit of ludity in it as well, from what I gather, which is yeah, you can you can, you can make the love times, <laughs> which is an interesting feature. I'll give it that. It's appealing to a very niche audience. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the the idea is basically you've got to survive and become the strongest, and you kind of prowl the streets of Tokyo, and you can either be obvious herb herbivorous, herb herbivorous, 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 carnivorous, and obviously dependent on your animal. So each one will have a lot of different gameplay mechanics, and you kind of create challenges, like you complete challenges and stuff, like for doing certain goals in the game world, that, um, help you level up and so... move your way up, the, move your species up the food chain. <laughs> it's just take a mouse, put it at the top of the food chain. Just yeah, you just, can get you can get a mouse down to the food actually. chain, and like you can you can compare your progress about against people with uh, online leaderboards and things like that. But it just looks so. I hate to say the word because I don't like the word, but it sounds it sounds so wacky. <laughs> and incredibly fun. <laughs> you could have picked a better word. I don't think I could because that's all that this is. But it, it looks so bloody fun, and it's such an interesting concept. How much is it again? Ten pounds. Ten dollars. Oh, I'm I'm Ten pounds, I'm, I'm, I'm buying. Dollars. I'm buying. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be picking up at launch. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having that in. It looks like a game I'd absolutely love. It looks like it's handmade for me. It looks like everything we're talking about this week is handmade for you. I know, it's, well, pretty much it's a hard thing. life being Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hell. All I have to say is Tokyo Jungle, man. Tokyo Jungle. If you haven't looked into it, you better be looking into it right now. Let's stop the podcast and go look into it, because it looks absolutely brilliant. Just remember, no, just remember, you know, come back to the podcast. We're, we're still here. Oh, yeah, obviously. If you don't come back to the podcast, we'll hate you, and you won't get to hear about the other amazing things we're talking about. Exactly. Moving on to something that perhaps I can appreciate slightly more, although I'm not going to appreciate. So the Diablo 3 has added new levels, like player levels. Yeah, as in, the Paragon level yeah. system. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <That's... laughs> that, that interests me quite a lot because uh, Diablo 3 originally was kind of slated because it didn't really have anything endgame for high-level players to actually do. I mean, 
there were 60 levels in the original title, and you could get there fairly easily in like a game, like playing through the game and then through again for about half of the game. So in a game in uh, one playthrough and a half, you could be max level. And I mean, Diablo Diablo 2, it took you ages to get to max level, like months. Mm, yeah. And I mean, the fact that they've essentially added another complete leveling system is really great to see. And uh, they said that it would be comparable, like the, the long-term invest, investment you'd need to put in to reach max level on Diablo 3 now would be comparable to reaching max level on Diablo 2, which is, I suppose it's nice to see. Mm. Did, do you enjoy the Diablo titles? I never played three. Um, I liked two quite a lot. I never played one. Fair enough. What do you? I never. I've never actually played any Diablo titles. I've. I'm just like anti Blizzard for some reason. I don't like their games. I, I right. don't know why. But you must have seen gameplay from Diablo titles. Oh, oh yeah, but I mean, it looks interesting, but it's just. Randomly generated dungeons isn't my sort of thing. Hmm. It, I mean, it's focused on combat. I like puzzle sort of. I like puzzle based dungeons, which is why I'm like a massive Zelda fan and stuff. But I mean, when it's combat based gameplay, I'm not all that much of a fan. I I, I do really like Diablo. I was quite excited for the prospect of playing Diablo three, but then obviously, pretty much everybody has said there was a massive letdown compared to previous titles. So. Not so excited anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Something I've been, I know it's, it's not the one I ever bought or picked up. I played a few hours of a, either two or three fairly, fairly recently. It's within like half the last half year. Yeah. But um, I don't know. It's not. I, I didn't find it. There was there was no nothing in it that made me want to buy it or keep playing it. Yeah. It was fun enough in itself, but there was just no. Like when I stopped playing, it, I didn't like think that I wanted to go back to playing, I didn't look forward to my next session or anything like that, I just thought it was quite mundane really. Yeah, that's fair enough. I suppose it's for one of those big stats, um, mm. it's just like, oh my god, I got a rare drop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I suppose Sorry, that... we work for a gaming press site when we're making fun of nerds. No, we're not making fun of nerds, we're making fun uh, of yeah. people who are obsessed with rare drops. <laughs> but everybody's obsessed with rare drops. He, he has a point there, Dan. He has, he has a bit that's of fair. Uh, I take back everything I say because I'm one of those people. <laughs> uh, so yeah. yeah. Um, it, <clears throat> go on then, Michael. I'll let you do it. Yeah, I was <laughs> going to say, one thing that's confused me a little bit this week is that the Bioware Command & Conquer title, Generals 2, has been confirmed to launch without a single-player campaign, which, I mean, I'm not a fan of these sorts of games, but that baffles me. That absolutely um, baffles me. I really like Command and Conquer. I don't. I don't really think it. I don't see why it baffled you. In fact, they they kind of explained why they were doing it. They were like the reason they were doing it seemed quite fair to me. The fact that they're trying to like kind of work on making the cooperative and competitive experience a lot more kind of strong, deep, and like well rooted into the title, rather than people that just play the campaign. They want to compete with StarCraft and things like that. And obviously, they're not going to be able to compete directly with StarCraft particularly well, but if they need to focus on the online portions to do that, then fair play to them. I mean, what I'm thinking of is, though, it's some people need to learn the mechanics before they can do it. Not everyone's a veteran. People need something, some sort of tutorial, tutorial. but sometimes they don't give tutorials. They just give you a single-player campaign, and it will just teach you as you go. If it's just online only, it's going to be a case of people will walk in and get absolutely destroyed. And well, it depends, because having online only doesn't necessarily mean there's no tutorial. It means this. If we take Awesome Lords into account, that is uh, that claim is to be online only, and that has you know a fairly in-depth tutorial mode yeah. or practice mode. I can't imagine them not having a tutorial. That would be just stupid. I mean, they'll have a skirmish mode as well, obviously. Oh yeah. One thing I've, I I know it's it's been a while since I played a Command and Conquer title, but an online you know going into an online game and all that, there's quite a lot of effort you know to uh, to even start playing. And I, I always focus very, like, you know, you could probably count the hours I spent on the multiplayer in, in one hand, or as single player modes throughout all the titles, really. I spent zillions of hours on. I love Rainbow uh, 2 online, though. That's, that's the game I spent a lot on. But no, I, I don't think. I, I, I can see what they're trying to do, and it'll probably do very well for them, because I know that I'm in the minority when I say that I can never be bothered to find decent online games. Yeah. But, um. 
don't know, something I'm slightly disappointed about, whether or not I would have actually bought it regardless, but um, it's, it's the single players always were so good in the game, it's not like their single players were lacklustre, like uh, perhaps Call of Duty single player modes, where they, they carry significant weight. Call of Duty single player modes were no, lacklustre, that would be a very They're brilliant, brilliant. they're very, very good. Yeah. Very, very good. Well, okay, <laughs> um, it's not as if you can finish them within half an hour. Yeah, okay. And, um, <laughs> yeah, the, the previous games actually seem to focus on the single player, yeah, whereas, I know, it just seems like quite a large jump to me. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of single player content that I mean, in these games, there's so much single-player content. There's just there's so many hours worth of it. People get so much out of it, and it just seems like a waste to not do it, really. Yeah, yeah I, I would agree I, to an extent with that. I can, I can, like I said originally, I can definitely see where they're coming from with this because it's kind of obvious that they want to compete with StarCraft because StarCraft is the real-time strategy game to compete with. Oh yeah. Yeah. Anything else is nothing in comparison to StarCraft in real-time strategy nowadays. But um. Obviously, StarCraft has a campaign. It has a rather good campaign, apparently, that I've not played, yeah. despite owning StarCraft. But um, <laughs> if if you want to be big in the RTS scene nowadays, you have to focus on your competitive play. So but that's why they need to erase like the single player completely. Because I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. It, they, they don't need to erase it. But uh, I, I suppose the fact is that they're going to. I mean, one thing you, we haven't mentioned, which obviously you have to take into account, is that Command & Conquer General 2 is actually a free-to-play title. Yeah. You don't, uh, you don't okay, buy that, it. That actually answers a lot of... Uh, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah. <laughs> a lot more sense now, so I wasn't aware of that beforehand. I believe... I believe uh, I'm not sure if everything's free-to-play, but I know the title is free-to-play. Like they, they announced it um, in December 2011, something like that. Uh, they announced but, um, the game then, but they only announced the free-to-play stuff like a week or so ago. Did they? Sorry. I, I haven't really been keeping up. I just know that they have announced it as a free-to-play title. But um, I think their goal with it was, you know, they they want to compete with StarCraft. Obviously, they don't, if, if it's a free-to-play title, how are you going to compete? Because you can't put that much money into making a game that is perfectly competing with StarCraft. So you're going to have to cut something. Yeah. So I guess they yeah, cut, nice. but they didn't mind. I suppose a free-to-play single-player game is. Uh... Yeah, I mean, oh, let's be let's yeah, be fair though. Yeah. We we all played RuneScape at one point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, with the free-to-play model, it's just kind of like, is it going to be free-to-play? Is it going to be freemium with loads of premium content that just gives people unfair advantages? I mean, if you're trying to get into the competitive scene with it, it's not really going to do much against StarCraft if you're going to have people who have advantages. I can't it. imagine they'll do like, oh yeah, these units are only unlocked if you put a certain money amount of money in. I think maybe they might do, you know, certain what they call factions are only available if you put money in. But I don't imagine they'll be overpowered. Obviously, I don't know this, but if they if they made units premium, that would be stupid. Oh yeah, I mean at the moment it's all speculation because we pretty much know nothing about it apart from the fact that it's free to play and that Bioware is making it. And they, I have to be honest, most free to play games. Um, you know, they they never harbour that much of an unfair advantage. Oh, it depends on the sort of game because there are so many free to play games. The ones that are most well known are probably the ones where, you know, it's fair. But the ones that aren't as well known are probably just kind of terrible because everyone gets advantages. About it, any modern RP, um, any modern free to play game is uh, that's sort of something that they focus on very largely is making sure that it's fair. Yeah. Oh yeah. Even if you're paying. True. Because obviously. If they don't, if it's an online free to play game, they don't really have like the competitive edge against people that actually charge for titles because they can't create a title that is as well, high quality as that very easily. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously you get things like LOL, and that is so big simply because it's such a well balanced MOBA. Yeah. No other reason as to why it's so big. True. And, uh, Moving on a little bit from this because uh, we talked quite a while about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm bored. <laughs> As um, on live, had a bit of a, uh, I don't know, what would you call it, a uh, benefactor change, such thingy majigums. Yeah, there was kind of a worry about on live actually going fast. I mean, there was a few emails and stuff thrown around over the last few weeks, and uh, I believe somebody what? from their company actually announced that it was going bust. And now it went down fairly recently, didn't it? The actual servers and such. I don't think so. No, no. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm just. What happened I with it? Was... Yeah. Oh, no, you... Okay, I'll explain. 
yeah, what happened was it was, was there was rumors going about people had seen people leaving the online offices carrying boxes in the middle of the day or something. And there were rumours going around that everyone had been laid off and the company had gone bankrupt. And there were some reports. And there were, there were, yeah, there was also some emails sent from employees attesting oh, yeah. to that. Yeah, and like there was a few days of kind of confusion. No one knew what was going on. And then someone came out and basically said that they had to buy out. Someone had bought the company. They'd have to lay off a lot of staff. They were rehiring loads of people. But the service itself is still up. And it will stay up in its current form. And no one will have any kind of complications with it yeah oh, okay, that's and that's uh fine. obviously about half is it about half the like the yeah. rise of the original company is still ongoing so i think yeah I think it's about that had a it had 200 beforehand and now it's down to about 100 yeah that's fine so don't worry guys podcast podcast on live sorry <laughs> well done <laughs> don't worry the podcast isn't gonna die either but yeah <laughs> but on live isn't gonna die by the looks of things despite a lot of rumors now um one thing that I wanted to talk about that wasn't related to the news, although it is also related to the news because it's in the news at the moment, is Grand Theft Auto Five. Oh yeah, GTA yeah, Five. There was new screenshots released. Was it today? It was today or yesterday. I think it was early to this morning actually. Yeah, it showed um, vehicles. I think it was showing vehicles. Yeah, it showed like a jet, a bike, and a was cheater. it the car called the cheetah? The cheetah, yeah. Cheetah's an old car from GTA. Oh yeah, it's a staple of the series. What? Yeah. So I thought it would be a good time, like this week, to talk about GTA Five in general. So I'm just going to throw it out there, Matt. GTA Five, go. Um, I really enjoy GTA. Um, I know we, we, I've mentioned it slightly before with Just Cause, but I don't know that sort of run around, play, enjoy yourself type game. It, it's always the it's a game that the online is is so much fun on it. Yeah. And I'm not a huge fan of online games, but. GTA is, is something that's always attracted me. Um, I still and have fact a lot of memories from GTA online. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I play so much with uh, Sunny. So much, you wouldn't believe it. And it, it, it's like every time you go on, you just have a different fun experience. Yeah. Because <laughs> and, um, when, when you're just thrown into a, into a sandbox online, uh, like GTA, where it's just literally a city-wide sandbox, and you can just do whatever the hell you want. And it's designed yeah. originally around a single-player campaign, so there is a lot of variety. Having that in multiplayer is just so fun. Yeah, one, one thing I would say is that I don't know, I've probably played almost 100 hours with Octo. <laughs> and um, I, the other multiplayer modes, other than the free to play in a sandbox, whatever you want to call it, mode, are a bit boring. Yeah, they are. I think there's Bonder Base 2 or whatever. And that's enjoyable, but then there's no other variation of it. It's just that. Yeah. And so I hope, I hope that 5 offers more on that. See, with GTA 5. I don't want anything but just free roam. That is all I would ever want from a Grand Theft Auto game online. Because, yeah. I mean, I can just remember, like, a memory. Like, I can remember two very distinct memories from GTA 4. One of them, and Dan was playing with me at the time, there were about eight of us, and we literally just camped at a helicopter port and just yes. kept... As soon as helicopters spawned, we'd all run for them, and we all had rocket launchers, and it was brilliant. You yeah. have to know that it was like four or five of us that knew each other, and it was a few people we didn't know. And we just kind of <laughs> camped there, and we'd wait for the helicopters to spawn, and then one or two of us would jump in the helicopters, and the rest of us would just stop, sit there and stop anybody else getting anywhere near the helipad. <laughs> we, we'd just be sit camping up there, throwing nades at anyone who tried to climb the ladder. It was, it was great fun. We must have spent like an hour shooting people off the helipad, because they were all just relentlessly chasing it. Hmm. The fact that they've got the uh, jets in there... Oh... Uh, to, to me, that's sort of telling me that they, they're going to go back to a very large world as opposed to the quite uh, small GTA 4. Well, they're going back to San Andreas. They yeah, literally which, have announced that. Yeah, it, which mm. makes me very happy because San Andreas was my favourite GTA and it was my favourite GTA world. Oh, same here. I loved it oh, so much. Loved GTA San Andreas. Absolutely. I think I think the reason I loved it so much is, like I said, um, while you're talking about Just Cause 2, is the fact that San Andreas didn't really take itself as seriously as a lot of the other GTAs. And they incorporated yeah. a lot of um, kind of simulation aspects to it, like the whole uh, eating and uh, like training up your skill with guns and your, your physical prowess and shit like that. I, I really liked yeah. those aspects because it added things to do along the side, and it was it wasn't particularly serious. And uh, Carl John Carl Johnson was a fucking great main character. Oh, CJ was great. I mean, it's like it, you could customize him. That's what I love. I mean, you mentioned yeah. it before. There were so many different aspects. 
I remember just like one time I went into the desert, found this like this secluded burger shot or whatever it was called, and I just got him fat. And because I made him overeat, he was just puking all the time. So I got a bicycle and like middle of the desert, just rode off on the road. Just felt like it. Every now and then he'd fall off and just puke. It was great. <laughs> Memories like that oh. are what made GTA for me. Just stuff like that. I really hope that four, no, not four, five goes back to that sort of thing because that was yeah. just brilliant. I mean, GTA Four was actually my least favorite GTA out of all of them because it felt to me like it. Obviously, a lot of people would disagree with me here, and I actually expect both of you to probably disagree with me here. Um, it felt like it tried too hard to create a really like strong, interesting, and provocative storyline. And in oh, doing I that, hated the storyline. Yeah, in doing with, that, it lost what was GTA. If it, yeah. it felt like they cut out a lot of side content to add a lot of realism and like add the cover system and things. And five, I found re- um, four. Sorry, I found really restricting. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And it had the multiplayer, which was, uh, you know, obviously the best yet. And that made it, you know, a great game. But other than the multiplayer, I, I wouldn't spend half an hour on the game. I didn't actually finish the story. Nor did I. I didn't get anywhere in the story. I can remember. It was the so island. mundane and boring. I never, I never even... Was there even three islands? I'd imagine there was. There were, uh, but the third one was just tiny. Oh. It, so it was... I got to the second island in the story. No way, there were three, aren't there? Yeah, there were three. Yeah, said... Bottom right, top right, and left. The yeah. third one was literally just like a strip club and a prison, and that was pretty much all that was there. That's all you really need. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have Matt just uh, giving us a bit of insight into his life. <laughs> so, um, I think Michael agreed with me here, but Matt, what's your favourite GTA? Um, I never played a hell of a lot of GTA, because I never had a PlayStation 2. Oh, God. Come on. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, San and- probably San Andreas, because I got it on PC later, fairly recently. And obviously, whenever I went around my friend's house, that was always the game of choice. So either that, or the original. Because <laughs> the original was great. And I don't care what anybody says. I'd agree with that. I really enjoyed the original. I, re- I really enjoyed two as well. I never they played need the military two. back in. Because the military was great. Driving your tanks through the bloody um, pay and spray so the military will stop following you. <laughs> GTA 3, man. Oh. I, I, okay. So no, you, just, you go, that's fine. I was just going to say, I love all the GTAs. Oh yeah, they're, they're all great. But I was going to say, with GTA 5, I mean, everyone who played 4 either loved it or hated it. It was, kind of, it was a Marmite GTA, but I mean, with GTA 3, it was slightly lackluster, but it was just so amazing because at the time, nothing had been done yeah. like that before. And it was just insane. And I think with 4, they've created a base so they can pretty much make another San Andreas. And more than anything, that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm just looking forward to this expansive world because they've got their base, they just need to develop on it, and they're going to make it amazing. Yeah, 4 had everything I, I, I loved except for the environment, which I just thought was so restricting. Yeah. But other than that, you know, the cars, the guns, I thought they were all fine. I mean... Needless to say, we're all very much so looking forward to GTA 5, because as long as it can improve on GTA 4 and kind of bring back the atmosphere that previous styles had, we should be getting an absolute fucking brilliant game, to be honest. Nothing else to say other than, you know, it will be great. Yeah, definitely. So, um, yeah, the next thing that we were going to talk about is something that Michael will know a lot more than me about, because I'm not a big Valve fan, so I'm going to let Michael take it. <laughs> yeah, re- take it. Like, take recently... It. <laughs> Like this 15th of August, I believe. Yeah, it's the 15th. Team Fortress 2 got another major update, and it was the Man vs. Machine update, which is essentially a wave based. Horde mode. Yeah, pretty much. But, I mean, I have a lot of gripes with it, and that's mainly because it's pretty much a premium bit of content for a game that I've already paid for. And yeah, it's premium. Well, obviously, despite you, pe- there's obviously a whole other argument there because. The whole I paid for it. Why should it go free? Argument has been said many a time. But obviously, TF2 is a free game at the moment. At the moment, mm. but I mean, it's just. I mean, I'll explain a bit more about the mode in a second. But I'm just gonna. I'm gonna rant as I do. But <laughs> it's just I paid for it. I should have some sort of. I mean, there's a queue system. You pretty much have to buy a ticket to get like a fast track. I think it's 99 pence or something. But I paid for the game. I shouldn't have to pay for an extra. 
game mode. I've paid for the game already. I'm pretty much in the premium like group, as it were. I don't know why I should pay extra to play this mode that's free. It seems like no, a massive... I, I, I disagree with the whole with that argument, really. I, I... No, when you buy a game, you're paying for what the game is at the moment. Yeah. Any future updates on that are... are yeah, exactly. you know, so it costs a certain amount of money for them to make the game, and they're selling it to you for a certain amount of money that's going to justify yeah, their when efforts. When TF2 came out, you bought it when it came out for that amount of money. Because it went free a few years later doesn't mean that you deserve your money back or anything like that. It just... Like, the game has been out for years. You experienced it when it was full price because it's gone free. You're not losing out. You had the game years before anyone else has. That's and uh, it, does, it doesn't, like, entitle you to any future updates for free because that would, again, time with the whole DLC argument that you have. Oh, I bought the full title. Why should I pay for DLC? You should give it to me for free. It's... In regards to, um, you know, the actual update itself, though, I'm, I've, I'm not a fan of TF2, to be honest. I've had it for ages, and I've never liked it. Not not so much I disliked it. I, I never understood why everybody loved it so much. There was nothing fundamentally great about it. And it was just very, very standard. I think it's... I think it's ultimately a good thing that they've got this wave-based thing, and it's a little bit more content that they can justify milking it with, but at the same time, it still, to me, doesn't feel like a, a substantial enough game with any real individuality about it that sets it aside from other games of a, of a similar genre. Yeah, I'd agree with that, to be honest. Oh, I hate being on the losing side, but I I just... When Team Fortress 2 came out, it was bare bones, and it was great. About, like... I mean, as soon as the updates started rolling out, they I don't think I, they started actually pretty early with them, but as soon as they started rolling out, the content just started to overwhelm the balance of the game, and it started to kind of dent of the quality, it was chipping and chipping until eventually they just thought to themselves screw it, let's put in community items and that just ruined it all I think, I mean how often, I mean when did you actually start playing Team Fortress 2? Um, I don't think I've accumulated more than 10 hours on the game, so when I started playing I played it first of all when it came out to put it that way. Oh, so you played it vanilla okay, then I can't really argue against you with my point, but uh, it's just every game that Valve makes I think that it has some strange feel to it. It just feels right. The aiming, the weapons... It's uh, automatic, more or less. <laughs> the weapons have a large splash damage. Death carry little consequence. Oh, death doesn't carry... I can see why you'd like it. I can see why you'd like no, it. It's, ca- <laughs> it's casual incarnate. <laughs> no, if you if you played it at like a good level, if you're actually good at it, you know, you'd know, you know. But, you know, obviously you're not. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> man well, versus machine. I'm kind of really... I'm annoyed at it. I'd like to play it, but I haven't had the chance because of this little model that Valve's got, where it's either queue up to play for an hour or buy a ticket. I, I don't like it. But it's See. obviously a very standard pre- premium model, sorry. Oh, it's very standard, but it's it's strange because uh, I I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's strange. It feel it feels to me like at this point you're arguing that you have a sense of entitlement because you bought the title. That's exactly it's, how I feel. It's really. a weird sense of entitlement to have. Uh, I mean, it seems that as soon as it went three to play, it just started to degrade in quality for me. Again, I, mean, as... uh, I think what we've learned here, Matt, is that Michael's an elitist TF2 player. And bitter. Yeah, very bitter. Uh, what gamer isn't bitter about something? <laughs> but I'm, I'm fairly content with life. <laughs> oh, you, sh- you ruined my arguments, Matt. I, I know, I, it's what I exist for. I, I do hate you, so. No, I, I love you really. As um, well as the whole uh, man versus machine horde mode lol. Um, there was something else going on with Valve and Portal 2 recently, wasn't there? Oh yeah, the co-op, wasn't it, for the, the map maker. maker thing? I'm not sure how many of you have read it, but I wrote a an article about the map maker of Portal 2, so I'm actually very, very fond of it. I like it very much, and I haven't had the chance to play with the co-op stuff yet, but I'm going to very soon, and I'm very very excited because there are so many different options for me now. Because before... the map maker was definitely the fundamental, the, the best part of Portal. I didn't particularly enjoy the story mode oh. because I, I found it to be blunt, particularly easy. Uh, that's fair enough. I mean, I prefer a really nicely structured experience over just like difficulty. I, I yeah, the, the storyline drove itself very well, mm. but I I still think it was. Like, when I say I found it easy, I found it 
boring almost. It was so easy. I just I struggled with Portal One, and then I got to Portal Two, and you know, it's just I walked into a room and I could see exactly what it was. They were pulling sort of the same tricks then and then again. You just have to get into the same the right frame of mind, and you basically you got it sorted. That's that's one of Obviously. the biggest criticisms for Portal Two because Portal One there were so many solutions to each each puzzle. There are so many things to do. You could experiment with it. Portal 2 is just set in stone. Everything was set in stone. I'll give you that, but... Yeah. I'm aware that uh, there were, the campaign was supposed to be longer, but during testing they deemed a few of the levels too difficult. <laughs> but obviously this, um, with the level creator, it's been about for a while now, It's um, it adds a hell of a lot more difficulty to the game because people actually make worthwhile challenges and things. Oh yeah, there are so many difficult maps. I mean... I remember when it first came out, I spent about 30 minutes trying to figure out one map, and then I found out it was literally just the simplest thing ever. Yeah, yeah. Stuff like that, I love that, but at the same time, like the overall Portal 2 experience, I just, I adored it so much. I don't care if it's structured, but with the co- The addition of co-op in, into both the storyline and this, it is a very fun thing to do, because it is a game, despite being linear, it is a game that you can talk about with on, with your friends. And although you're doomed to repeating the same jokes over and over again, i.e. moving the exit portal, etc., it's you know it's still still a game that's very fun to play with your friends. Oh yeah, I mean, but I think they focus too much on that, to be honest, the, with the original game. But then again, this uh, map builder co-op thing is something that I'm really interested in, despite not being the biggest fan of Portal. Oh yeah, I mean it's, I mean it's not even Portal. That's what I love about it. Anyone can get into it. It's just like a really simple program to use. I mean, you don't even have to like the game, you just have to like making puzzles. Yeah, yeah. And the co-op aspect as well. I I mean, it's going to be hard to make something consistent that isn't completely broken. But I'm... I want to find some time to kind of get into it, because I remember when the the map maker came out initially, I spent, like, three hours with it in one session, because I was just... Map makers are always fun. It's a fundamental of life, really. (laughs) Especially when they're so streamlined as well. Oh yeah, it works very well, that's one thing you can say about it. Mm. But I can't wait to make my first really broken co-op map, it's going to be great. Yeah, it's it's definitely you know, sort of a fun experience, and the fact that everybody has Portal 2 is also adds a lot to it, just because you can always like, send it to your friends. Oh yeah. And I'm assuming that the maps you can make, I'm, I've got no idea, but I'm assuming that you can send them to people who have it on the console as well? Uh, no, I'm not sure. I think, th- I mean, if you've got the PS3 version, of course you can kind of, like, get your code, put it on your PC and just, like, download it, but otherwise, no, it's only PC for now, I believe. Oh, okay. That's fairly interesting, considering they made such an effort to make it cross-platform. Oh yeah, but, you know, you know, PC supremacy and all that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we got to have something. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. In any case, Portal 2 makes my blood boil, so uh, let's move on a little bit. Keep things flowing. Gotta get that flow, bro. Yeah, you guys are off soon, aren't you? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. We, we, I'm actually leaving for I-46 on Thursday. It's Monday as we're recording this. So, yeah, I'm leaving so, in three days. So when this is live, you guys won't be here. Yeah, I will, okay. I'll, I'll already be in um, Telford when we this goes will. live. Yeah, we'll both we'll both be at the event. Sounds fun. Oh, <laughs> it will be. It's, it's going to be great. Uh, obviously, I series is uh, competitive gaming. Uh, pri- largely, primarily, but uh, yeah. not so much anymore. It's kind of like fifty-fifty nowadays. Okay, fair enough. Well, yeah, we'll give, we'll give Dan like ample time to gush right now because he's very, very, very excited about it. I've got nothing to gush about, Brian. Oh come on, I, you're very. Excited. Wasn't the case last night. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um. <laughs> Obviously, um, I know that you mentioned earlier that your team is uh, not quite... Together competing. anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, obviously, you're not going to be competing in the COD tournaments, I imagine. I am not, no. No. no um, I'm quite... In- cause before joining Parable, I didn't know squats about competitive gaming. <laughs> and obviously, I've learned quite a bit after talking and conversing with you, because I believe Greg is competing, isn't he? Uh, Greg, is, Greg is competing on Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade on 360 and on Skullgirls on 360. Isn't he going oh, okay. into the King of Fighters 13 one as well? I'm not sure. Maybe. He's unsure. It's not yeah. confirmed at all yet. Well, he's Scottish anyway, so chances are he'll uh, be particularly... <laughs> yeah, chances are he will be the King of Fighters. 
<laughs> I think it's just Greg. He'll just walk in. He'll scream at his competitors. They'll just they'll just crap themselves and run. That's his strategy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, nah, I think we should talk more about Parable. Anyway, no, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but no, I, I'm, I think it's quite interesting, this whole competitive gaming and where it's going, because it's definitely something that's becoming more popular. Oh, yeah. Large scale, you know, people are... Beforehand, I thought it was very much people who are interested in competitive gaming played it and watched it. And now people who aren't even interested in gaming have... You know, I've, I've come across a few that enjoy competitive, watching competitive games. Well, yeah, so especially the PC scene. Like the PC scene is particularly large now. I mean, um, if you look at things like StarCraft and uh, League of Legends, those titles, there are a lot of people who earn their entire livings off playing that game, and you will hit a hundred thousand viewers in every single tournament for that title. Yeah. Like they, they are massive. They are already pretty much the size of a few smaller, like real life sports. Yeah, I noticed that um, Shoot Mania that we've talked about briefly before in other podcasts did remarkably well. Uh, so like straight off the bat, yeah, it's, it's starting to get a lot of support. Sport. I think I think the reason is because um, a lot of esports organisations are jumping on it because uh, it's toted as being designed around esports. So I think that those organisations that jump on it are going to get a real say in how the game is kind of developed and finished. It's enjoyable to watch, yeah. which I think is a fundamental of it, really, isn't it? Yeah. It's something that I think it's focused on, whereas I, I don't know, I might be wrong in saying this, but to me, COD doesn't seem to be focused on enjoying visuals, but more so enjoying gameplay. Um, it's an interesting thing to say, because at Gamescom, which there was uh, four COD streams just earlier this week, or last week, and um, yeah. the entire pitch around Black Ops 2 was making it more interesting to watch in a competitive environment. That's fair enough, yeah. Just on like Shoot Mania, the kind of fundamental thing that makes me say this really is the fact that the uh, a lot of it, despite being you know quite fast paced, there's a lot of suspense in it. Yeah, I mean, and I'd say when you're watching COD, great. that doesn't get transferred to the viewer really. But when you're watching Shoot Mania, I think even the viewers feel suspense because the bullets are so slow moving and all this, and you're like, is it going to hit? Is you know? So with with the uh, Call of Duty, I'd say that that comes in because um, Call of Duty, the competitive kind of community at the moment like the rules that you play competitive by are so different to what you play in public um so That's unless right. you've actually played competitive in the past you don't really understand exactly what's going on you don't understand the rules how people play i mean there's no kill streaks half the guns are gone nearly all the maps are gone nearly all the game modes are gone you just have this like very core like gameplay mechanics that's really almost as limited as cod 2 was back in the day but like you know, it's it's very very limited in what you have access to, and I feel that that's probably why it's not as accessible to watch because you don't really understand it. Whereas with something yeah. like Shoot Mania, I mean, Shoot Mania, you only play the equivalent of Search and Destroy, which is like mm. you've got you've got no respawns and things like that. But um, it's quite similar because you don't have any banned weapons or anything like that, and it's because the game was built from for competitive from the ground up. And uh, yeah. I'm hoping that Black Ops 2 is great because Black Ops 2 has been toted as being built for competitive from the ground up. That's fair enough. Yes, yeah. like, things are you know jumping around a corner. In in COD, when you're watching that, it seems very broken up. And when you're watching it as a spectator, I don't know it's something that because in in Shoot Mania, like when you, even when you're like turning around and things, it's always slightly slow. There's no crouching and all this here, and it. it it's taking away from the gameplay, but it makes watching it so so interesting that even I, who find spectating very boring, I find myself watching. Yeah, you know, I got carried away watching games of it and end up seeing it for a good hour or so of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually quite enjoyed watching Shoot Mania, to be honest. Yeah, I yeah. think with Black Ops Two, I mean, I'm not entirely sure on all of the features that being adding, <laughs> being added, and I'm sure Dan, being the enthusiast that he is, will correct me if I say something wrong, but. I'm pretty sure there's some. There, they've been, pretty much been adding like thousands of options just for competitive stuff, just optional things like shout casting, support, um, and stuff like that. Yeah, they, they've added something called COD casting, which, um, to be honest, is better. It's it's a better piece of software than nearly any PC game has. It's better than anything Halo has, 100%. It's better than anything on any other console title, and I'd argue that it's better than any other title on PC for shout casting because you get if if you don't know much about competitive gaming, you get all these overlays and things that people have to manually put on to be able to shoutcast. Like, they need to put all the information on the screen so that people have access to everything they need to watch the title and be interested. Yeah. And, uh, what Codcasting does is it does that for you. 
like it puts up all like the scores going on constantly. It shows the o- the overview, and you can uh, see who's playing in the bottom left. It like comes up with the name of the person who's playing and what team they're on. You can just fill that in yourself, and it does it for you. And uh, you can swap to like overheads the map so that the commentator commentator can tell you what's going on. You can you can just like hit a button and it goes to a listening and things like that. And I th- I feel that things like that is what's going to push esports. Oh yeah, that, that definitely sounds like something that would be a, a necessary really for any game to actually take off on esports. Yeah, it streams it all to Twitch TV as well, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, you can stream directly from your Xbox to uh, Twitch TV or Justin TV with no external hardware or software. See stuff like that on consoles that. I think that's amazing. I think that needs to be something that's just a staple of console games. That is. I don't. I don't think any other title does that. No other title does that. Oh no! I I think you're not not on console or PC. There's no title that's ever done that. Yeah, you need external software for PC. The fact that it's actually built in is amazing. I I think that's a great move, and it's. I mean, it's something that I'm probably going to use, but not in a competitive sense. But the fact that Treyarch, to be honest, it looks like they're. They're really the conscientious developer now. I mean, it's kind of taken a paradigm shift between Infinity Ward and Treyarch, and I think that Treyarch are probably definitely the better developer now. I always prefer Black Ops. I'll say that right now. I, I, think, I, pref- I think Black Ops is the best Call of Duty. Oh, I, yeah, I agree so much. I mean, I'm not like the enthusiast or anything, but my God, I love Black Ops so much. <laughs> What's your take, Matt? Um... I don't know. As, as everybody knows, or has probably gathered, I'm not huge. I'm not the biggest fan of Call of Duty. Uh, oh yeah, definitely not. I don't think it's. Uh, it's not. It's not. It's not. It claims realism, and yet, you know, in, in reality, Halo is more realistic if you actually take into account. Oh, yeah, the, uh, Call of Duty isn't realistic in the slightest. Oh, no. The actual mechanics. Yeah, I think they've kind of given up claiming realism now because they can't even. I suppose. Aim it anymore. They've got robots. Yeah. That's not real. <laughs> I don't know, yeah, what, what I saw of the video, it doesn't seem like something I'm interested in at all, the actual game of it. What we've just been talking about seems remarkably interesting, though, and it seems like something that should, or, or not so much should off, but uh, I'm surprised that no, nothing else has it, considering how much weight competitive gameplay carries these days. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the console team is just developing. Um, yeah. I don't think there's any title but, that... But you said that it's not the same on PC. And no, it's definitely not. I, I feel the console, especially in regards to Call of Duty, is starting to catch up to PC. Where, like, the community is getting bigger and bigger every single event. And uh, you know, this time next year we might be seeing Call of Duty people make a full living off it. Yeah, it's certainly uh, it's an interesting development. Sort of be watching this rise up because competitive gameplay has actually been going on a bit of fact here for you guys. Um, Space Invaders was the first competitive title. Oh yeah, I knew that actually. Uh, did you? I didn't. Just quickly, quickly explain that to me, please. Uh, they had a tournament in, I believe it might have been New York, but I might be wrong, so don't quote me. And um, there was a thousand pounds, the first prize, plus a gold cartridge game of it. Wow. And then second place got a silver, and third place got a bronze. And uh, you know, you can pick up these copies on eBay or something if you're lucky enough for a fucking fortune. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, so that is when it all started, actually. That was the first thing. And, obviously, we were... Well, I wasn't born then. <laughs> was I? What was it, when was then? it again? I don't know. Back in the day. Actually, no, I wouldn't have been born. It would be way back oh, in yeah, the day. Oh, yeah, it would have been in the 80s. The, uh, yeah. The latest. Yeah, the latest. So I was a bit of a dense moment there. But, you know, we, we've generally seen the evolution of it. I think yeah. we're sort of in the penultimate stage now of it, because... Games are going all out now to try to appeal to this market. It's, it's on TV. There's more than enough programs and channels in regards to gaming. I mean, streaming is really where professional gaming is really going to hit big. In fact, it's where it does hit big. I, don't, I feel that this is obviously just my mentality on things in general, so a lot of people probably will disagree with me, but the fact of the matter is, in my opinion, that streaming is going to be a route that television goes down rather than gaming that currently streams going down the route of television. I feel that like television in general is going to become a smaller and smaller thing and streaming will become a bigger and bigger thing and you'll get streaming to your TV rather than carrying on TV-wise. Like, that's the way I feel the technology is going. And yeah, it certainly um, seems... Yeah, it's definitely the way it's going. I mean, we're seeing it a lot on live, aren't we? Or online, sorry, is what I meant to say. Obviously, YouTube's all streaming, etc. So. You've got stuff like smart TVs coming out. It's it's going to start accommodating for it, you're right. But yeah. I, I feel that competitive gaming in general really has that like audience on things like Twitch TV and all that. And I feel that when 
street, the, the medium of stream becomes more mainstream, I feel the competitive game will grow alongside it. And I mean, it's already growing at a insane pace at the moment. Uh, I definitely think uh, it's going to take off, and it's because I don't know. The most surprising people enjoy things like uh, watching Call of Duty. I was doing a bit of labour work at some point in my life, and I was with a guy that must have been what fifty-five, and he started talking to me about Call of Duty because <laughs> you know obviously we didn't have all that much to talk about, and he started talking to me about Call of Duty, and I was, I didn't know shit about what he was on about because <laughs> <laughs> he was really into it. Yeah, and. It, it, it's just so odd to find people like that who are really into these titles because you know he's not the type of guy who would picture to be a gamer. He keeps pigeons for a living and is labouring. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's it's definitely spreading out wider now, and people aren't feeling like you have to be part of the scene to enjoy it. Yeah, I I feel that that's that's a really good thing though, and it's it's just not great to see, to be honest. Yeah, but I think that's um. Yeah, I think that's great and all. And moving back to I-46, which we started on 15 minutes ago. Yeah. It was, um, so you guys are going to be going fairly soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Friday. Yeah, we're, we're leaving for I-46 on Friday, but I'm I'm leaving on Thursday. I'm going to be staying at my falls for a night. Yeah. It's going to be great. So I'm imagining we're going to have a lot of juicy content on the site. Call the oh, juicy yeah. content. Um, plug, 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 plug. Well, um... <laughs> We, we've got like quite a large content plan. We're going to be doing interviews. We're going to be doing walk around at the site. Um, we're going to just be getting a lot of content. We're going to have a big uh, like kind of coverage video put together after the event, so you can look forward to that on our YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash Parable Games. Yeah, plug. On the channel that you're watching right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I thought you were just going to go ahead and uh, give the URL for YouTube then. <laughs> <laughs> you can watch it on yeah. www.youtube.com. <laughs> but yeah, um, I think that's basically it for the podcast. Tonight, oh no, one more it? thing, one more little shameless plug. On on our site, we ha- will be putting up very soon. In fact, it'll be up when you see this podcast a pre I forty six article showing you all the details of the event itself. And after I forty six, we'll be putting up a big, massive blowout article. So you should definitely look at that on www.parabgames.net. Shameless plug over. And that's it for the podcast tonight. Yeah. So, um, guys. Matt, do you have anything to say? Not really, just that it's a laugh as usual and we hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. Michael? I just want to say that you're both awful for hating Valve and basically, yeah. Gaben's not going to suck you off anytime soon. Gaben's yeah. not going to suck anyone off anytime soon. So yeah guys, we hope you enjoyed the fifth installment of the Parable Cast. Make sure to check us out on YouTube, check out our previous videos and we really hope you enjoy. See ya. Bye. <laughs>